Hey there everyone, I'm Rasen Ryu, but my friends call me Rasen. You know what's rare in Steven Universe? Having a single episode give you more answers than questions, let alone an entire Steven Bomb arc. So I'm going to highlight all the answers we've been given instead of giving a full recap of the episodes. Because let's face it, we've all already seen them, right? But first, let's go over the bingo card. I've already filled out most of it from my last video, because they already happened. But if this is truly the end of season 5, then there are some things on this card that were just hoaxes. As much as I wanted all of them to be true, that's just the way it is I guess. Peridot didn't fight a trash can. We got a cameo from Uncle Andy but nothing heroic. And Beach City didn't even get touched. But Ruby did learn an instrument, so we can mark that one. And I was looking forward to Ronaldo acting out his favorite anime, even if we didn't get the reference. But that was also a no-go. Kiki and Pearl were talking together during the wedding reception, and I'm just gonna count that as BFFs because why not, right? A gem gets shattered and diamond fusion were also hoaxes. But in a way, I'm grateful. Not only did we get to keep everyone in the show, but this leaves a little something for the future of Steven Universe. What will the diamonds become if they fuse? It's something to look forward to, and hopefully it happens. A new opening is something I knew wasn't going to happen yet. We've just hit the end of Season 5, so maybe we'll get one for the next episode. We're overdue, wouldn't you agree? Onion steals a spaceship and Jasper returns were also hoaxes. But maybe just for now. You never know what might happen in the future. Pizza is consumed and Ruby moves in with Greg. I always kinda knew that Ruby wouldn't move in with Greg. It just didn't seem too plausible in my opinion. It might have been fun, but what if Ruby just got angry and burned a hole through his van or something? Funny? Yes. Realistic? No. And of course, Amethyst consumed pizza in the episode, What's Your Problem? So we can mark that one off. Wait a second. Bingo! We got a bingo, everybody. Amazing! Astounding! And I think we won a prize. What did we win? Wait, what? What do you mean we went another hiatus? What do you mean we should have seen this coming? What do you mean I'm talking to myself? What do you mean- Now that we've gotten the bingo card out of the way, let's shift the focus to these episodes. I won't go into everything that happened in them, but as I said earlier, I will talk about all the questions that these episodes answered. First things first, Pearl was actually given to Pink Diamond. I know it's already been speculated at length at this point, but we finally have concrete confirmation straight from the source. We also know that Pearl was more like a nanny than a servant to Pink Diamond, not unlike Alfred is to Bruce Wayne. What I mean is, she was there to help out Pink Diamond in times of need, but still had to dote on her in order to make sure she stayed safe and performed her actions diligently. This of course doesn't mean that Pink Diamond was incapable of taking care of business or getting serious when need be. We learn more about how she tried to convince Yellow and Blue Diamond to stop the colonization of Earth. This helped establish that Pink was stronger willed than a lot of fans gave her credit for, myself included, so that's great. Though like Pearl said at the end of the episode, Pink was still somewhat foolish and selfish. She wasn't perfect like everyone seemed to claim at first, but that's okay. She fought for what and who she believed in, and at the risk of sounding too preachy, she was who she was, for better or worse. I'm really happy about this episode and all the further insight we got into Rose Diamond's character, but I didn't like how Sapphire came around so quickly about accepting who Rose really was, especially with how she stormed off and lashed out at Ruby. I was kinda hoping for a real falling out with them that spanned more than just a few days, like how Garnet wouldn't speak to Pearl for some time when they were fighting. It was a bit anticlimactic is all I'm saying, but the power of love is stronger I suppose. In the episode What's Your Problem, we finally, finally get to hear how Steven really feels about the whole Rose Diamond revelation. And he's kinda nonchalant about it. Well, I'm kinda annoyed that a young teen is not showing a lot of outward emotion upon finding out who his mom really was. But at the same time, Steven has grown up quite a bit over the course of the series, and it shows with him being able to process everything without lashing out. 
although I still don't like how he seems to be deflecting his own issues to deal with someone else's. Like Amethyst trying to talk to him about it, but all he wants to do is think about how Ruby and Amethyst are taking the news. Speaking of Amethyst, her being the most mature crystal gem is pretty enlightening. She's had a huge character arc where she's come from being the least mature to, at least in this moment, the most mature. Garnet fell apart at the revelation. Pearl is crying on the floor about losing Garnet. Even Steven has to keep deflecting his own feelings. But Amethyst knows that Steven needs a rock, no pun intended, so that he doesn't fall apart. Pretty cool, Amethyst. Pretty cool. She's really taken to the big sister role now, and it makes total sense because she and Steven are actually siblings. I loved everything about this episode, from the great Amethyst goofs to the heart-to-heart -heart talk at the end. Don't ever change, Steven Universe. You too, Crew Universe. In the episode, The Question, it turns out Greg didn't know that Rose was Pink Diamond. And speaking of annoying responses, Greg is certainly Steven's father because he is way too chill about this fact. But maybe he freaked out at first too and we didn't get to see it. Like Ruby filled him in off screen and he was floored by it then, but he's fine now. That's my headcanon and I'm sticking to it. And we didn't get many answers out of this episode, so I'm going to fill this void with the things I liked about it. Let's see, um, everything? The super chilled out background music in the beginning while they're on the hill is really, really nice. I'm going to have to add that to my playlist. Horsey Thist is the funniest shapeshift to date. She whinnies, she lets Ruby ride her. She even eats grass. Like what? Amethyst, you're way too into this. I loved every second. And wow, what a surprise. Who'd have thought we'd get a solo song from Ruby of all characters? That came out of left field for me, and I'm glad to have heard it. An Old West style song in Steven Universe. I love it. Finally, Ruby proposing to Sapphire is the most cute and wholesome thing this show has ever done, and I couldn't be happier that the Crew Universe decided to go that route. Steven Universe. Crystal Gem, Royalty, and now Wedding Planner. This boy can do it all in the episode Made of Honor. Oh, and there's Peridot. Maybe we didn't see her in the previous episodes because she was out gardening or something. Or maybe she just shapeshifted really small. <laughs> you never know. Ah, uh, so it's called a folding bone. You learn something new every day. Okay, I know that little factoid was out of left field, but I do like the way Steven Universe drops little nuggets of knowledge from time to time. Bismuth returns and, you know, of all the ways I could have theorized that Bismuth was freed from her bubble, I never thought that Steven would just let her out. And then Bismuth lets out Biggs too, so much for it being accidental, which I thought for sure was going to be. After that, Steven tells Bismuth about Rose, and her reaction is completely expected. I'm so glad she's not just cool with it like some other people. Steven. And I really love that Bismuth made the wedding rings for Ruby and Sapphire. That's like the perfect wedding gift. Nice touch. I'm gonna have to contract her for my wedding. Now for the two episode special, Reunited. There weren't a lot of answers here either, but I do want to talk about all the cool things in it. Like Peridot looking super cute in her wedding attire. I know we see it on her head all the time, but yellow is definitely her color. And even with the constant spoilers on Ruby and Sapphire's union, the wedding was still beautiful. They seemed so happy, you would almost forget that they're characters in a cartoon. The way those two arm ships part the clouds to reveal themselves to everyone? Epic. And now, after so many answers to so many questions, we are faced with another question. One of a few questions, actually. What would have happened if Greg tried to charm Blue Diamond? Would that have worked? I mean, they did find common ground on their first encounter, so she could remember him, right? Something to think about. And Steven's just full of surprises. First he has a watermelon army, then he's royalty, now he's got a geo weapon fighting for him. This kid is unstoppable. And the power of a diamond is truly incredible. Blue Diamond is able to destabilize other gems emotionally without even trying. And she doesn't poof easily to boot. Crushed by the weight of two large ships, 
and it just slightly inconveniences her. I mean, I knew the diamonds were strong, but the crystal gems had no chance of beating them. None. Even with Lapis, their most powerful ally, they could only hold the line. What are the diamonds made of? Light, they're made of light. And I just love how Yellow Diamond emerges from her ship like a Dragon Ball character and immediately takes control of the fight. She wasn't playing any games when she stomped Steven into another plane of existence. Okay, that's not exactly what happened, but then again, yes it is. Now, Steven has always had this power to speak to others telepathically whenever he's asleep. So that dreamscape with all the statues makes somewhat total sense. But it's still cool to see it a bit differently. I wonder if this more defined look into what he's seeing means that he's gaining more and more control over the power. However, what is truly incredible is that yellow and blue have the ability to affect the same space without actually being there. Could Steven possibly do this later on in the show? That's a lot of fun to think about. And here's another question that this episode raises. Will Lapis and Peridot get their stars now? They're both crystal gems after all. It's long overdue, so here's hoping. Ah, this arc was so good. I know we got a lot of answers here, but we also got a few questions. Not least of which is something that I've asked in a previous video. What will happen in Season 6? If the diamonds are no longer a threat, what could the conflict be? Or, if White Diamond is not a fusion of Yellow and Blue Diamond like I theorize, will she be the new threat? Will she be swayed as easily as Yellow and Blue? If the diamonds had to fight, would White Diamond be able to beat them? Then there's still the chest and lion's mane, curing corruption, removing the cluster from the earth, the reason for the cluster in the first place, Lars and the off colors coming back to earth, the Steven and Pearl and Steven and Garnet fusions. There's a lot of plot points to tie together and a lot of fan service to deliver in later seasons, but no serious conflicts from my perspective, unless the cluster really will be utilized later for something. But that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, mash those like, sub, and bell buttons. We got a lot of answers from this arc, and it's definitely one of my favorites in the whole series. Tell me what you think about the Heart of the Crystal Gems arc in the comments below or on my social media. Links in the description. I'm almost done here, but I just couldn't sign off without calling attention to all the Gurren Lagann references in this arc. If you haven't heard of it, Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann is an anime that takes place in the future. Humans live underground in isolated villages, but there are some, like Kamina, who dream of visiting the surface world. When they finally make it to the surface, they realize they don't want to go back underground and they fight every day to stay on top. There's a lot more to the anime than just this as the plot becomes ever more complicated, but that's the basic gist of it. And it's during the first season of this anime where I can draw a few parallels from scenes from the Heart of the Crystal Gems arc. Like Pearl attempting to fuse with Pink Diamond for the first time, parallels Kamina trying to fuse his mech, Grunen, with Simon's mech, Lagan, for the first time. And Rose Quartz telling Garnet to never question her existence is almost like the quote, believe in the me that believes in you, that comes from Kamina giving pep talks to Simon. And Amethyst's dynamic pose in the episode, What's Your Problem, is a direct comparison with Kamina's dynamic pose, whenever he says something profound. All of this is to say, I see what you did there, Kruniverse. I see it. On that note, I'm Rasenryu, and I'll see y'all next time.